So after my latest video about continuity and displaying the various continuity types, the question came up, mathematically, geometrically, what does continuity really mean? How do I know what I'm achieving with this continuity? What's the mystery behind it? And a lot of people seem to question that. Now, in NX, you have various ways to create surfaces. And in those ways, you have through curve mesh, and then end-sided surface, and then uh, studio surface, fill, and so on. So when I go in here and I look at the actual surface function, you'll see my studio surface. If I look under studio surface, I have a through curve mesh, and I also have a through curves. Now, the green surface that I have here is a studio surface. This is a newer function in NX. The through curves is this purple one, is uh, an old function. This is 35, 40 years old from the system from long, long time ago. Now, the way that they do their continuity across boundaries is different. If I look at this surface, you can see here, this porcupine looks different than this porcupine. If I look at the control polygons, you'll see that the control polygons on this surface are very different than this surface. You can see here what they look like. These adjoining surfaces are identical. All I did was copy them over and make the respective surface. Now, as I look at my porcupine, you can see that these are curvature continuous. Well, they look curvature continuous anyway. Um, definitely not G3. This one looks pretty close to G3, but it's not. But it's, they're curvature. If I look at this function here, you'll see that I have curvature applied. I don't even have G3 as an option for this function. If I go to my studio surface, you'll see I have curvature applied. Okay, so it's all there. Now, with that being said, why do I have such differences in the shape of that surface? And the reason is the way the math is performed. If I look at the math of this surface versus the math of this surface, this uses what's called a C type, capital C, the letter C, type continuity. This surface uses a G type continuity, capital G. Now the difference between a C and a G is this is a mathematical representation of curvature. This is a true mathematical representation. And there's a million things you can do. Let me bring up a, a, a web page on smoothness that defines this as Wikipedia. This is one of those moments Wikipedia is actually pretty accurate. It gets into the math of the curves. It gets into the de definition of what those curves are and how they are defined. Now, the short of it is, when we look at C, it's a mathematical definition. Right? You get in all this math, what C equals smooth, and how this is defined, and so on and so forth. If you want to go through this and, and understand it, go for it. You'll see here, C0, curves are joined. C1, first derivatives are continuous. This is a mathematical equation. C2, first and second derivatives are continuous. C3, um, first through the nth derivatives are continuous, so the third order. If I look at my G continuity, the curves touch at the joint. G1, the curves also share the common tangent direction. G2, the curves share a common center of curvature at the joint, joint point. Say that fast. So what this is telling me is this is based mathematically. This is based geometrically. And that mathematical versus geometric application changes the way the parameterization of the surface is constructed. So this is a true mathematical representation of curvature based off of the mathematical input from either side. This is more of a geometric construction of curvature based off of the inputs from either side. And you can see that there's a difference. This is a newer form of math here with the studio surface. This is an older form of math or what the old 
standard in the world was for continuity was the C type. Now that we have a G type, we can achieve smoother surfaces and simpler surfaces because of the way that the G type parameterizes itself. Now, I'm going to use a surface uh, analysis function. It's called B surface information. And I'm going to pick the studio surface first. And if I look at this, degrees in the U and V, it's a 3, 5, number of poles, 4 and 6. And it's relatively smooth, no seams internally, and it's a one by one patch. And as you can see, the control points, you can see the UV directions as well. Now, I'm going to go in and use the same B surface information. I want to go and pick this surface. If I look at this, you'll see this is a three by three. So mathematically, it's a third degree surface in the V, whereas in the other one, it was a fifth degree. Okay, and it still has a four by six pole count, but how this is achieved is it has some internal seams. And the number of patches is three. So if I look at this, you'll see these internal edges here and here. These are the internal patches that it's talking about. So internally, this surface has some uh, breaks in it. And that's how the surface is able to mathematically achieve its curvature continuity. So the G-type continuity, by nature, is a little smoother because, again, it's a geometric continuity. So that's basically uh, what you're looking at depending on the type of function you're using for continuity. Now, another question that I had is in regards to what am I looking at with this porcupine? And I've done videos on this, but uh, I'll just quickly talk about it and I'll continue to do more videos about it. Is the porcupine is measuring, in this case, the amount of radius on the surface, or the amount of curvature on the surface, I apologize. Let me double click on the porcupine and um, as we look at this, this is measuring, again, the curvature of the surface. Okay. Now, there are options down here. If I go to Output, Analysis Object, um, Section Curves, this has already been applied, so I can't go back and add this, but I can say both. Settings, this is just a linear or logarithmic. This is just a display on how all those porcupines analysis are and this is just a micro position of where this analysis is being performed. The uh, section placement is uniform and this is just simply all the way through different ways that I can pick to create where the section is being made for the analysis to occur. Now this is where it gets really important to pay attention to the label value. You are measuring the actual curvature of the surface or you can measure the radius of curvature. So if I measure the radius and I go min max, there we go. Let me go length. I can go show inflections. I can show the peak. We suggest a scale factor. Let me turn this up so you can really see what's going on. So these numbers are just indicating what the radius of curvature is at that point. So at this point, it's uh, 789. If I go to the curvature of the surface, you'll see it's the inverse value. This is the curvature max, so 0.0013. So if you want to analyze what the radius of curvature is at a specific point, you need to change this label value. Now, if I look at at this point, you can see this is the radius of curvature. So the surfaces share the same radius across at this point, which is 1,426.68. Okay, so this is the radius at that edge point where the two come across. So the porcupine is based off of that measurement of radius. The length of it is based off of the measurement of radius. So this is telling me that this is the radius of this porcupine. This porcupine comes off of the surface, or off of, I should say off of the section, radially or normal to the surface at that point, and it's measuring that radius at that specific point and placing up the porcupine. Now this is a linear section cut. It's a section cut, right? It's linear. So each point on this is going to show um, along that section cut normal to the surface. 
if I had a curve that had uh, torsion on it and was off plane, then you would see something that looked almost like a, uh, a Christmas tree a pine needle uh, or a Christmas tree branch with the needle sticking out everywhere. It's very neat. I'll talk more about the section analysis. I'll talk more about this curvature comb in uh, future lectures. I'll just keep this one short. But just to give you an idea of what you're looking at in in this analysis. So, um, and, and, and again, this leads me back into the continuity talk. What you create, how you create, seriously affects the surfaces. In this case, these two surfaces are two different operators. You can see two very different results, looks wise, for those surfaces. Okay. Now, if I want to, let me go ahead and hide this. Hide this. Let me go back into analysis. Let me show, uh, let me go into reflections. Let me pick these. We'll go ultra fine and uh, do like that. So as you can see, this view, everything looks pretty good. When I start rotating it, this is curvature, this is curvature, you can start seeing that there's a little warble in this surface. Because again, mathematically, this has to be parameterized perfectly. Geometrically, this has to be parameterized perfectly. So there's the difference. You can see now that each operator does something slightly different to achieve that surface or achieve that continuity.